Hello dear subscribers welcome back to another video. In this video we will build this circuit. This is basically a class A amplifier producing a total of 300 watts RMS and 150 watts RMS per channel. This circuit is totally a transistorized design making it very robust. So let's start. Here is the PCB and all the components that are required to build this circuit. You can get the schematic file, the PCB files, the Gerber files from our website www.oxtix.com. So here is the front PCB layout for our reference and we will start from all of the jumpers used in this circuit. We will simply place the jumper wires on the PCB like this and solder them. And after soldering, cutting the wires, because the neatness is very important while working. Now here you can see that our first jumper wire has been soldered. We will solder the rest of the jumpers just like this. The wire which I am using here is the ethernet wire and you can easily get it from your local market, local store or you can take it out from your discarded ethernet wire. So now all the jumper wires are soldered on the PCB. Now we will solder all the resistors starting from 10K. Similarly, we will do it with the rest of the resistors and the components. As every part number is written on the PCB, so it's very easy for you to place all the components and solder them. If you want to know that how to etch PCB at home, then you can watch the detailed tutorial to etch professional PCB at home. The link is already given in the description. Cutting the component legs while soldering makes your work neat and clean as it is required. All the smaller resistors are now connected and now we will connect the bigger ones of 0.47 ohms and 5 watts. After soldering all the resistors, capacitors, diodes, now it's turn to place the transistors. I'll start from the bigger ones. And now we will solder the smaller ones. Now we will place all the input and output connectors and solder them. So finally all the components are now soldered on the board and here you can see that how neatly the work has been done. Now it's time to connect the heat sinks to the transistors at the power stage. The heat sink should be of suitable size and width to absorb the dissipated heat correctly so that the transistors may not get hot more than their specified operating temperature. In this way, the transistor's life is increased and they can operate for years. Connecting the heat sink is very simple. I will mark all the holes with a pencil and then drill accordingly. You must have a proper drill press or you can go to hardware shop for drilling the holes.
holes are now drilled accordingly and now we will apply compound to the heatsink as well as on the transistors. Heatsink paste or heatsink compound is very important to keep our transistors cool and for the creeping. And now we will tighten all the screws very firmly to make sure that all the transistors backside is completely fixed with the heatsink. Especially the power transistors of bigger size should be firmly fixed with the heatsink because they dissipate very much amount of heat. Our entire circuit is now completed. Please visit our website www.oxsticks.com for free PCB and schematic diagram of this circuit. Continuity test is very important especially after assembling the circuit for the first time. Before turning it on, we will check it with the help of multimeter by setting the multimeter on beep or continuity. We will check it basically with the heatsink. One prop of our multimeter on the transistor legs and the other one is on the heatsink. And we have to make sure that there is no connection in between the transistors and the heatsink. Okay, this is the power supply circuit, the dedicated one for this amplifier. If you want to design this power supply circuit, please check out our previous video. The link is already in the description. So finally, our circuit is now on and working. The cell phone is connected and we will play some music now. As you can notice that the sound is very very clear without any noise. Right now I have connected one speaker with the left channel and you are listening to one channel output right now. The transformer rating is 25, 0, 25 and 8 amperes. And after rectification, the kit is now working on 35 plus 35 volts and 8 amperes. And now I am going to check the right channel by applying input and taking speaker out from the right channel. So both channels are working perfectly. Let's increase the volume and check the sound. So guys that's all for the video hope you like it please visit our website for schematic pcb and the gerber files of this great project for free thanks for watching this video stay subscribed if you're already a subscriber and please subscribe if you are new here thanks for watching the video see you in the next video take care and goodbye